Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Just doing a quick follow-up to do a uh, uh, kind of a rundown on the table saw base. Uh, the table saw base is, is uh, double plywood uh, walls. On the corners they have basically 4x4s four four and I did that so I could round off the corners. The paint was matched to the original metal uh, stand and it's close, it's not exact, but it's pretty close. On the inside, the ramp that the dust comes down, it's roughly about 25 degrees. Um, and on the very bottom of the thing, uh, I didn't show this in the video, but there is a center block in the very bottom. It gives it weight, gives it more stability, and uh, that's why I did that. On the uh, back side, I got the pneumatic actuator to run the blast gate and that runs right up to this switch. So I turn this switch on, the saw comes on, the blast gate opens, I make my cuts, I shut the switch off, the saw shuts off, and the blast gate closes. And that's working really well. Uh, I have leveling feet and um, casters that flip out of the way. Uh, that way I can still move it around if I need to, but it still stays level. And if I do move it around, I can level it. So that is what's going on with the table saw base. You'll notice over here is a small air compressor. I did purchase that uh, just recently. I wanted a very small air compressor to go under here. The one I had under there before was just too big and bulky. And that one is perfect for what I'm doing with it. And I'll show you that right now. So that airline from the compressor is right here. It goes into this Y and one goes into this solenoid and one goes into this solenoid. This solenoid runs this uh, blast gate, which is built the exact same way as the other one. The only thing I haven't done here is figure out how to trigger it because this airline runs four tools. So I can't just hook that up right to a uh, tool like I did on the table saw. The other airline runs into this solenoid and it runs that actuator that runs the blast gate for the table saw. I'm going to turn the table saw on. You can see the blast gate working. So you'll notice that little uh, second opening and closing. That is because the motor has, it creates its own energy. This is my theory anyway. Creates its own energy so it sends power back through the lines just enough to open that and trigger it one more time. In my case it's actually okay because it gives me a couple extra seconds for air to flow through and it lets the uh, any excess dust get out of there. So in my case, it's actually okay. I don't know about long-term if that'll damage the solenoid or not. So real quick on this actuator, everything was built the same. The only exception was this piece that for the uh, blast gate is offset a little bit, is about 20 millimeters, because the way the actuator has to mount. Uh, everything else is hooked up the same. It works the same. Uh, the only thing I got to figure out is how to actuate it uh, with a 110 volt plug. I uh, thought about doing a switch up here, but I don't know if that's the most elegant way to do it. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, my original thought was to hook it up on the back side of the other actuator and uh, when one blast gate opens, this one closes, and vice versa. But there was too much bleed out of the solenoid when I did that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, maybe if there is a way to do it, I'm not sure. Maybe a check valve or something that might work. Uh, I'll have to do some more research on that, but I'll keep you posted if I do. Um, other than that, I can manually operate this if air wasn't hooked up. And matter of fact, as soon as this video is over, I'm going to disconnect the air.
so I can manually operate that. Uh, but it works the same. And yeah, if you, that's it. If you know any way to trigger this, um, a better way to trigger this, I can't do it with the tools like I did the other one because this airline runs four different tools. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. As far as the outfeed table goes, uh, not much changed. I just made it a pinch shorter and uh, they asked if I was leveling it with the table saw and I'm not. Uh, there's probably a 3 16 inch gap between the table saw and the table. So you do that so you can run boards past the table saw and onto the onto the outfeed table. Now the question is why in the world would I cut a hole in there? Well, so I can do that. <laughs> and on the back side, uh, it was just redesigned and built a lot stronger. It's a lot beefier and it has leveling. So everything's level from, from front to back now and side to side. So that was the main reason I wanted to beat this up. Plus I can actually, I use this for assembly sometimes so I can actually bang on this now a little bit. So that's why I beefed it up. So that's all I got for you now. Um, I'll, leave, I'll keep you posted on anything that uh, I change or do. And I'll probably do that on Instagram. I probably won't do any more videos on it unless it's pertinent. Uh, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll put links in the description for all the products that I used during this build. And also the uh, paint code that I used for the table saw base. I've had a question about that as well. And I'll put a link in there for that paint code. If you have any other questions, just shoot them down below. For now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next time.